The next one is uh, our friend Nicolas Perez, he was introduced yesterday, but I want to add that he is the president of the next Barony meeting. You know, the international Barony meeting had to take place in uh, Madrid this year. Unfortunately, and due to the, to the pandemic, <clears throat> he had to move to 2022. Uh, we hope with the organization of this meeting that many people from India and from Ibero-America can attend to this meeting. So are you ready, Nicolas? Now I am in. I am in. <laughs> <laughs> Let me... Okay. I just was trying to change, but anyway, we are here. Okay, is that okay? Are you seeing and hearing okay? Yes. Thank you. So, uh, I mean, this is a great talk. Let me put my timer <laughs> because I don't want to be out of time uh, after Leonel uh, uh, great talk. I mean, he is extremely didact didactic to anyone and I think that uh, he has covered with uh, an extreme uh, elegance, what uh, gain and how can you uh, evaluate gain? And I would say that most of the most of the years, I mean, video head impulse test is uh, in the market uh, almost ten years now. Lionel was probably one of the first users in in probably in the world and in the Europe. We, we, I began just some months later, so I think we are uh, seeing uh, the video head impulse test for many, many years. And I, I was astonished for many time how the most, all the effort was made to evaluate gain and not saccades. And we have come after almost five years to this uh, a kind of question, are refixation saccades a marker of vestibular compensation in the cases of in case of a unilateral vestibular loss well this was the the thesis and the way how uh, carlos guajardo is in the slide uh, he got he he was my last uh, one of my latest uh, students in in pamplona he got uh, his phd degree this summer and it was it is his work all this information was just published in the laryngoscope. I think it's in the in the online version. Uh, anyway, you can get through me uh, in the research gate. It's the only way you can get it from, from me. And all the information is there. And of course, we are speaking of BOR, all what is said by Leonel. I must say that I completely or fully agree. And now we are going to speak on the fixation saccades and the PR index. And this all comes from one simple observation, as usual. And this is in the slide is Angel Batueca's kind of uh, the idea was coming. This is a patient with a vestibular svanoma. He was uh, surgically treated one year ago. This was a transmastoid neurectomy. After surgery, everything went very well. Uh, in the first follow-up, there was a caloric, a complete caloric reflexia, caloric reflexia, sorry. And one year later, he's doing very well, and he just came to visit the doctor in the one-year follow-up. And you can see in the video, head impulse test. Uh, in this case, it's a diff this different system, and I'm not going to go into details, but you can see that in the stronger black, uh, is the head velocity and in the gray is the eye velocity response. You can see that the eye velocity is quite lower than the head velocity, which means that the gain is very, is very, is very small. It's, it must be some, some like 0.2 or something like that. And you can see those refixation saccades, as just mentioned, covered and overt. Well, this is another patient. He also had a vestibular svanoma. He was treated with same surgery, a transmastoid neurectomy. He's also in the one year follow up and on the calorics very soon, he has a complete uh, uh, absence of response, a caloric reflexia. 
that this patient came to the hospital and now he's not feeling well. He's unstable, completely unstable. And he needs something to be done. Of course, you would say, let's move to vestibular rehabilitation. That's the answer. But the question or the observation, sorry, came from just looking to both a video heading pulse test. And of course, they show almost a very similar uh, low gain. We are speaking of the same patient, same surgery, same result, same follow-up. I mean, everything was same, but the, 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 being the gain the same, almost lower, you can see that in one patient, the one is doing well, there are two blocks of saccades, clearly seen the cover and the over, and in the other patient, saccades are appearing all over the uh, evaluation, all over this test. Uh, in as much, this patient, uh, when we asked for the DHI, it was very coincident with their feeling, those with uh, being unstable, DHI score was high, those with uh, that one with the uh, good uh, follow-up, DHI is very low. So we uh, addressed uh, in a formal way with a uh, 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 50 patients and we divided them into groups according to the results in the video heading pulse test with in one group those on your left in in blue uh, they are patients with just uh, two or three uh, saccades always appearing at the same time uh, cover and clearly over and the other group was made of patients with in which the low gain was uh, followed by uh, saccades uh, that were appearing in this type of uh, registration uh, all the time. Uh, there was no grouping uh, in co pure cover, stop, and then uh, pure over. Differences between them were that in this uh, uncompensated group, they were more disabled. Just have a look at the DHI, it's almost 50. Uh, these patients have lower preoperative vestibular deficit and were a little bit older, but there was nothing in difference between them. So after this, uh, this uh, observation was published at that time, 2014, and then we began to realize how to analyze the, the saccades. Of course, the evaluation of the gain was ongoing, and I may say that, uh, I mean, this is uh, non-stop uh, conflict between which is the best way. I think Lionel has moved to a very clear position, which is the instant gain evaluation against the position gain. And I think for many reasons, he's uh, must true. And we know that saccades were just uh, classified and cover over or mixed. This is a typical example where you see cover and over. Again, I'm not going to enter into details, but we know when you move the head to one side, they will go to the other. In case there is a deficient BOR, then the eyes will move with the head and then have to make a refixation circuit to the target backwards. So we, we can see the saccades at the end. In this type of presentation we are showing, you can see that all the responses will appear with saccades almost at the very same time. Or we can see how the saccades appear at different times. The question is, why do they appear that way? And this is the answer that we began to work with. You can see in your left side that after the response, a low, we are presenting, sorry, here the eye velocity, just eye velocity. And the response is in the five different uh, tests. And you can see that it's always a low velocity response and there's a saccade it appears always at the same time epoch. We, would, we can say that it's isochronic. So when the, the, all the, the tests are collapsed, you see only that the gain is low and circuits appear all together at the very same time. We call them gathered. And in the other, in, if you look in your uh, right, this is another type of patient. They are almost, they are also, sorry, five tests, five responses. These are low velocity responses, but have a look. Some circuits appear very late, uh, response one, very early, response two, uh, one covered and one over, response three, 
uh, just one in the middle, response four, and another one a little bit earlier, response five. When you collapse all of them, then you have the uh, figure in your right side. The saccades appear all along after the head is stopped, and they, uh, we, we call them scattered. So saccades can appear as gathered or scattered. For this, we, we wanted to perform an automatic saccade analysis and we developed a software. This software is, uh, was published in 2015, is open and is, uh, you can use whoever you want. You just, have, you just have to download and use this. And this is the hit call software for analysis, not only of the game uh, according to the position method, but mainly for the assessment of the saccades. So we perform an algorithm. This algorithm is quite complex, but is explained in the, sorry, in the, in the paper. And now we can speak on a isochronic or gutter saccade or heterochronic or a scatter saccades. The important thing is that after this analysis, excuse me, we provide a number. We call this the PR index. This index goes from zero to 100. Zero will be no saccades, 100 will be a lot of saccades, all not organized scatter. And I'll, I'm going to show you some examples. This is a patient with a right ear Meniere's disease. He is uh, 39 years. It is a follow-up uh, eight months, eight, eight months after intratympanic gentamicin treatment. He's doing well. He's feeling clean from the clinical point of view. He's feeling well. There's a small uh, right between nystagmus. The caloric test is almost 40%. The paresis in the right side. Rotatory chair test is normal and the DHI is, oh, is 6 is okay. In this case, you can see the head impulses on your, uh, the one for the right side is on your right side, and the gain is almost normal, but there are some strefixation saccades at the end. And at this point, the, the system gave us a PR index of 8. This is a patient with a male, 32 years, with a vestibular right side, the vestibular neuritis, and he's coming eight months after diagnosis and treatment. He's doing well. There's a left war uh, a nystagmus, a little bit uh, easily seen. The caloric test is 40% uh, hypofunction. Rotatory chair is normal. The chair is quite, uh, in the, in the board is 26. And now you can see there are a typical uh, cover over saccades and a second group of saccades. These are a, a gather saccades in two times and this gave us a PR index of 23. This is a patient with a left-sided vestibular neuritis six months after diagnosis and treatment. This patient is doing well but uh, he has a kind of a very high uh, DHI to my opinion with a mild caloric testing and we see a, a low, uh, sorry, a normal gain with refixation saccades that appear scattered all around the time after the, uh, after the head impulse. And this gave us a PR index of 50. And this is a, a PR index of 57 in a patient with a left-sided labyrinthitis one year after. And this patient is extremely bad. He is a 58 regarding DHI, right word nystagmus, the caloric test is 33% paresis. So in some way we were doing this, and sorry, this I, I didn't remember, this is a PR index of 67. You can see this is a right-sided vestibular neuritis, nine months after, this is a patient doing bad, he's feeling unstable, a caloric test is very strong, paresis, rotatory chair were abnormal, etc. So we were trying to make a kind of a evaluation of the disorganization of the presentation of saccades. The PR index is an assessment of the uh, presentation along the time of the, uh, of the saccade. So we hypothesized that the in subject with non-compensated vestibular damage as a result of a unilateral peripheral vestibulopathy the synchronization of their response to refixate in the case of an incompetent 
VR will reflect the degree of steward compensation. So, with the signet, a, a research, a, a transversal, a, an observational study between 2012 and 2016 at our hospital, and we have uh, 28 patients, 12 of them with vestibular neuritis and 16 with a postgentamicin treatment, which were the inclusion criteria and acute vertigo after the neuritis, of course, or in the case of the gentamicin, with a video head impulse test should be pathologic with an spontaneous nystagmus, no ocular tear reaction, and cases where we needed the MRI was uh, normal. A follow up uh, should have to be performed the same day. There should not have been other comorbidities. It should be almost six months after the diagnosis, and there was not vestibular rehabilitation. We excluded those subjects with an extreme fast recovery uh, or when the test soon become normal or when in follow-up there was new vertigo spells or hearing fluctuations. So we wanted to skip clearly from the uh, Meniere's disease. And we just performed a complete clinical history, bedside, hearing vestibular and questionnaire evaluation. And those that are circle were the, the data we used to, def, the, to, to, to classify the subject as compensated or uncompensated. From the, uh, these are the uh, criteria we use in the case of spontaneous nystagmus, whether it was above two degrees per second regarding B and G. If it was a positional nystagmus, it had to be above three degrees per second in at least three positions. It's slow phase velocity. In the case of canal paresis, we were using the directional preponderance, about 25%. In the rotatory chair, there were two criteria, the asymmetry of the time constant in the impulsive test or the asymmetry of the slow phase velocity in the sinusoidal harmonic acceleration test. Uh, in, from the clinical point of view, there was a clear definition or not of chronic dizziness. And for the DHI, we did consider a, a patient to be uncompensated when data was above uh, 32 for the total score. We performed the video head impulse test, and then we got the PR from the uh, heat call uh, evaluation or from the system. I, I, I want to say, I want to regret, I did not get the word before. This is a coefficient of variation of the uh, saccades. When the saccades are always at the very same time, the variation is very small in between different uh, steps or time epochs and the score is very low when there's a long variation between them, which means that it, all the time you can get some kind of some, some sake. The PR score, as you can see here, goes up until 100. Well, we were using two groups at the very beginning. We wanted to test that they were very similar and they were similar in the caloric. They were similar in the, um, in the rotatory chair test, this is the time constant of the VR, and of course they were similar in the video head impulse test and also in the PR index. So we developed just one group of patients. For all of them, and in these different uh, evaluations, the BNG, the caloric, the HI, the clinic, and the rotatory chair, we just define whether or not they were compensated or non compensated according to the criteria just mentioned before. And uh, for each group, we were getting the PR index in the video head impulse test. So uh, now we have a population of patients that were compensated or non-compensated according to the BNG. I mentioned the directional preponderance, and there was no difference for the PR value in these two groups. Regarding the, calor uh, the, regarding the caloric test, I'm sorry, this is repeated. Regarding Excuse me, I miss, I just miss some, sorry, but I miss, excuse me, I think, oops, what is going, excuse me. So in the, in the spontaneous nystagmus, the VNG, there were no difference for the PR value for the compensated or non-compensated according to the VNG. In the case of the caloric test, the directional preponderance, there were no difference for the PR in the case of compensated or non-compensated. 
In the case of patients, uh, according to the DHI, there were differences for the PR index of those compensated and non-compensated, and this is the area under the curve. In the case of the clinical evaluations, there were clear differences for the PR index between those compensated and non-compensated. I just mentioned again that those were compensated, the PR index was very low. For those non-compensated, as expected, the PR index was very high. And this is the area under the curve just to define the, uh, the cutoff value for the uh, PR. And for the case of the rotatory chair test, the patients that were compensated according to rotatory chair test uh, show a different value of PR index from the non-compensated. Well, now we know that at least there are two issues that we, we did not find differences in the case of the PR index. And so now we are using the value for the DHI, the clinical evaluation and the rotatory chair test to perform a cluster analysis. And we were able to define two population or two groups of patients. One group was those with a very low PR index that were the compensated and the other one was the uh, uncompensated group of patients with a high PR index. And we were able to put a cutoff index or a cutoff value uh, for the PR on 55 in such a way that uh, the best, uh, sorry, the best number to provide the difference between being compensated and uncompensated was a uh, 55 in the PR index. Uh, we are using, of course, a new method of evaluation, but this comes from very uh, clear uh, uh, criteria for compensation and non-compensation that have been just published. We were able to collapse all of them, take those only representative, and just to say that this value of 55 in the PR should be able to uh, separate a two population of patients, non-compensated from compensated. This is, a, this is something that along the years has been, we were able to uh, show uh, this is a group of patients with unilateral vestibulopathy to whom we train to uh, perform covert saccades in such a way that what we were doing were just making those all scattered saccades to become gathered and there was a lowering in the amount of the PR index and of the DHI altogether and simultaneously. Also, we have published how the after vestibular spinoma surgery, both the DHI and the PR lower in parallel as regarding the uh, vestibular compensation in the subjects. Uh, also, uh, without any other measure, without any other uh, way of treatment, that any that in the case of the subject with Ramsay hand and vestibular neuritis, they follow their follow up. Uh, brings them to a good compensated times, but in other situations they become non-compensated and uh, spontaneously with any manipulation the PR, the PR index lowers or becomes higher and higher. And also there's also an increase in the dynamic visual acuity. All these uh, works are just published and are, most of them are open access. Okay. And why? Well, we, we are just thinking that the only way to make, a, to the, make a, an abnormal synchronization uh, of this saccade, that is something that is happening, we just were able, the only model to see is how the sleep disorders are able to desynchronize the visual tracking. And probably this is something that will be a, a new avenue for assessment of a vestibular compensation. Uh, so I want just to thank my co-authors. You can see them all here. We just in some meeting, we're just on almost friends. We are also friends, sorry. And of course, thanks to the organizers again. I think this has been an extraordinary meeting. Uh, I have learned a lot and I think that we have done the most to be here. And of course, thanks to the audience for being there and these uh, unusual times. And I think I am extremely on time for any question. Thank you. Thank you, Nicolas. Uh, perhaps you can answer some of the question in the chat. 
uh, San and in Spanish. So can you see the chat below your screen? Uh, yes, let, let me take away the screen. Now, there it goes, uh, Waltieri again, normal oh, no, game no. for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I know. I know we were going to collapse in here. Well, I think that always. So there's a question about the the. Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard. I heard Lionel. I was. I just got the complete lecture. Yeah. I think uh, first of all, any time you get something unexpected, you have to be sure that you are doing well. Uh, I mean, the, the head impulse is extremely subjective uh, in its performance and is full of, full, full, full of, uh, of personal uh, tricks, I would say, and errors too. Uh, so uh, when you find that, uh, you must be very, very first sure that it is doing well and probably ask another uh, colleague to perform the test to the patient just to know if this is, I mean, it's okay if you don't, if, 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 if you get low gain without uh, saccades and this is not a central patient, uh, this, pro this must be probably an artifact. But normal gain with prefixation saccades usually occur in patients that have suffered some kind of vestibular uh, the, uh, vestibulopathy in the past time, in unilateral vestibulopathy. It is not unusual to see patients that uh, during, at some time you see them with a complete unilateral vestibulopathy, they have the chance to recover again. And sometimes saccades are still there. Uh, over saccades that are mostly seen at this way are mainly visual saccades. And of course they will disappear when you are testing the subject in, in darkness. I mean, this is uh, well known, but I think it reflects some kind of visual promotion or visual uh, uh, preference in a compensation. And at some point, the subject gets well in the game, but doesn't switch off the uh, vestibular, the, the, sorry, the visual preference. I think this is the the main issue. It's a kind of, uh, it's like when you have a unilateral damage, you see a right between nystagmus, then fast compensation, fast adaptation, introduces a right, rightward nystagmus, so the eyes are still, then when the peripheral became, becomes normal, you still have only the adaptation nystagmus. So at some times then you see it now the right between nystagmus, in the case of a previous right side lesion. I think it has something to do with this. I would like to, of course, acknowledge first, not to, I'm sorry, to exclude any kind of uh, artifact. Okay.